and the meditations of my heart. And meditations of my heart. Be accepted from thy sight. Be accepted from thy sight. O Lord. O Lord. My rock. My rock. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. Is there anyone to make a confession at this time? I don't see it in one, so we'll continue with the singing. Number 25 in the submarine book. Number 25. Father, we give you all honor and glory. Thank you so much, Father, for the 
blessing of life and we are continuing to give to the Father. Lord, at this present time. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, to be before you, Father, to cast our cares upon you as Father and knowledge the goodness that you have done for us. Yes. Thank you so much for sending the only begotten Son and through his death and suffering, Father, that he has given us the right to eternal life and we'll be found faithful at the end of this life doing that which he has commanded us to do. At this present time, oh Heavenly Father, we pray for those that are sick among us and those on the crowd as Father, the Roosters, we pray for them, the Bates, the Mitchells, the Walkers, the Whitson, the Sawyers, the Daniel Pearson, the Dismore, Lamus, Mallory, and Brother and Sister White, and Davis family, and those that are bereaved at this present time of Heavenly Father, we pray for the Adams, the Clay, and Paul Adams, the Book, Vanderbilt, Holden and the Smith family, and also Brother Daniel and uh, Anderson and lost his sister and father. We pray for him also. And Father, just lift them up, give them a portion of heaven and strength. And Father, the days ahead is going to be difficult, but Father, we know that you are able to comfort us all. Mm -hmm. And Father, just continue to look upon us all because one day we got to face the same day that we were born then. And Father, we're going to have to look at but we pray that our lives will be in such, Father, when we leave this place. We have done all that we can do for your name's sake, and we have lived a life, Father. You have required of us in order to see you in peace. Yes. But if our lives are not, Father, you know that we will be, be a be condemned. We pray for those that are not coming to church like they should. We pray, Father, that you would just give them a mind to contain the name of Christ. And praying that they study the word and realize where they are in their spiritual life and come back from before the everlasting too late. Amen. We thank you so much for the rain that is coming. We yes. thank you for everything that you give us that some places not experiencing the rain they need for us. Oh, Heavenly Father, you said rain on the just as well as the unjust. And we know that your time is your time and it's not ours. So, so Heavenly Father, continue to bless us. I pray in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 Our song invitation will be 161 in the Blue Book. 161 in the Blue Book will be our song invitation. Song before the sermon will be 49 in the Southern Mary. 
Everybody say amen one more time. Amen. I'm thankful that Jesus was certainly lifted up. Yes. Over 2,000 years ago, he volunteered for us to die so that we may have a chance at eternal life. Yeah. So it's nothing for us to lift him up and praise glory and honor because he earned all, every bit of it. Every minute, every second, every hour that he hung that cross of Calvary gives me motivation to praise him, not just on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday as well. Because yeah. he's our Savior 24 hours, seven days a week. I want you to, again, turn your attention to Psalm 37, verse 23 to 25. I thank our dear brother Byers for articulating that hearing. Let me just read, get it in my spirit again by rereading it. And we have Psalm 37, verse 23 to 25. I mean, New King James Version, everything's going to be out of that version. Somebody say amen. 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 The Word of God, the eternal words of God that actually translates to New Testament Christianity as well, is the following. The Bible says, the steps of a good man. Yeah are ordered by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he delights in his way. Mm -hmm. That he is capitalized, meaning God delights in his mannerisms of the person following him. Right. Verse 24 says, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Right. I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. I'm going to give you, and I, I joked with uh, Brother Large earlier today, that I'm going to give you a Brother Large uh, title tonight. Mm -hmm. It is simply this. Oh. Although I am in a crisis yeah. and don't know what to do, yeah. one thing I do know yeah. is I will trust the Lord. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say it again. Amen. Because <laughs> I will stutter it all the way through if I try that again. But the key point is trusting the Lord mm -hmm. in your crisis. Let's begin now. We want to talk about some things that are common among people that name Christ as their Savior, but are actually not true in the Bible. Yeah. Can we start off with that for a moment? There's some, and you may even be in the camp of thinking these things, but these are more wise saying as opposed to actually coming out of the Bible themselves. Yeah. Now, let me give you a, just some examples of what I'm talking about that's common knowledge, but actually are in the Bible. Because we have greater promises than these. Yeah. Now, some people are going to tell me, I know God is pleased with me because I can see all the multitude of blessings around me. Not the Bible. Some people will tell you, as long as I'm living right, everything will be all right <laughs> in my lifetime. Some people may even say, I want to obey God so that my blessings are not cut off. <laughs> also, not in the Bible. That's one of the reasons people don't stay faithful right. because they're looking for expectations God didn't set for them. Yeah. It's expectations they set for themselves. Mm -hmm. And when these things are not met, they fall away right. from the Lord. So we're going to deal with that because we don't want to be programmed by man's thoughts and traditions, but by the Word of God and only the, only on the promises of the Word of God. Is y'all alright with that here today? Yeah. Well, again, these statements may mean well. They are, but they, and they may give us tears of joy. They fill up the capacities of arenas of so-called gospel meetings around the nation, but they are not true because they are not biblical wisdom. They didn't come from the mind of God. They came from our own hearts. You see, this is a point that I believe preachers have done historically. They've actually sold Jesus instead of taught Jesus. There's a difference between the two. You don't have to make Jesus more appealing to people. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I don't have to add to that. I don't have to add that Jesus said, come unto me, and you're going to have a match on heal in life. He didn't say that. He said in John 14, verse 1 and verse number 2, he said, let not your heart be choked. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, I made a match. He didn't say on earth. So you've got to make sure you hang on every word so you don't mess up the promises of God and have expectations that are not set by the word of God. See, false teachers who dominate television, the internet, and social media platforms often quote the Old Testament covenant with the children of Israel out of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and many other passages of scripture. But there's a problem with that. When God was wrote Deuteronomy, when he wrote everything from Genesis 
to uh, all the way through Numbers and Deuteronomy, that's the book of Moses. Mm -hmm. That's the law of Moses. That was the promises made to the Jews right. and not to us. And so when the Jews obeyed, God would open the windows of heaven. Yes, he would. And he would pour out all kinds of material blessings for them to have. But he didn't say that would be the, 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 the lot of the church. Amen. Because why? He gave us better than that covenant. That covenant is something you really don't want. Because you can't live up to it. Amen. Nobody has kept that since 20. The Ten Commandments. Not one of us. Amen. If we were under that, we would have grace and mercy. Amen. A lot of us would be dead. Right now, amen. So amen. I don't, I don't want that covenant. I'm, there's nothing wrong. It's not that it's evil. It's just not full of grace and mercy like we have it amen. today. We have it better. You don't want to go backwards, do you? No. no sir. Oh no, 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 you don't. You see, I'm gonna give the husband some props. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Gave him a hard time. But you know, I, I, we know that y'all sisters, we weren't the first one y'all fell in love with. <clears throat> we the last one, the best one. But we weren't the first one. <laughs> hey, man. My brother's with me right now? See, again, y'all got the upgrade when y'all got us. Is that all right? So why would you regress to the downgrade you had before? See what I'm saying? You thought you was happy, but you weren't happy until you got us. And so you don't want to go back to what you had before. So if you understand that, you understand the covenants. You don't want to go back to that because that wasn't good for you. You got something better here today. Am I talking to anybody here? Amen. Today, if I can amen, it better come from the brothers first. Amen. 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 Yeah. So we know going back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy and all of those, again, that was aimed to the Jews. That was the Old Testament, better known as the Old Covenant in the Word of God in and of itself. And we know that when Jesus went to the cross, that's why he was able to say those words, it is finished. Because he had fulfilled the Old Testament law for us. Yeah, right. And see, that's one reason why our, our friends, I call them friends, because they know reason or not, folks. That's one reason why our friends of the Seventh-day Adventist camp don't understand some things. Yeah. Because my cousin did that to me the other day. He wrote out, well, Jesus said not one dot nor tittle will fall from the law. That's only half the scripture. Right. The rest of the scripture said, until all things be fulfilled. Quote, quote the whole thing. Then if you do, you wouldn't make that mistake of trying to do the worship on the Sabbath and uh, all that kind of stuff. But see, I don't see one Sabbatarian that's also slaughtering bulls and goats. Right. Because if you do one part of it, you got to do all of the law. I don't see one of them going to Jerusalem for Passover. Huh? Celebrate none of the festivals. You can't have a little bit of it. You got to have all of it or none of it. And at this point in the game, we're talking about humanity, you better have none of it. Because you can't fulfill it and live up to it. You're already setting yourself up for doom. And I'm talking to anybody here today. See, I'm so glad that there's a Colossians 2, verse 14, Hebrews 12, 24, where the Bible said that when Jesus went to the cross, the law of Moses went there with him. And what happened to Jesus on the cross? He died. So that means that the covenant he took with it that he said that is finished, it died too. So that means there's nothing there in the Old Testament that can save us. So there's no reason to go back to it because, again, if you do, what are you doing? You're setting yourself up for disaster. Am I talking about it here Amen. today? Now, so obviously, then, from there, since the cross, since Jesus uttered those words, he is finished and died on the cross, we're under now the new covenant, Amen. better known as the New Testament. As John describes it, Jesus came full of grace and in truth. And I'm glad he handed over grace called the New Testament because without it, we have no chance Man. at eternal life. I'm talking to anybody here today now Man. that that New Testament does not promise you material prosperity in this life. Mm -hmm. It does not. Mm -hmm. It does not tell you you're going to have a house on the hill. It does not tell you that you're going to be driving a Bentley or a Mercedes or a Lexus. If you got that, more power to you. But it didn't say that everybody go ahead. Right. Amen. Amen. It's just nothing but. Is that God says we have a true relationship. Right. 
with God the Father in an intimate way that the Jews never had. Oh, amen. The gospel of deceit today. Mm -hmm. Because they're not telling the truth, right? And I'm going to ask some serious questions to those preachers out there that are preaching that it's going to be heaven on earth for all of us. I want to ask some questions about that. Is that all right, y'all, that we can question this for a moment here? Amen. We're going to disprove what they're talking about from the scriptures, right? You see, folks, there are many examples of righteous people throughout the Old and the New Testament who were people that bad things happened to, and they were still good people. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Y'all know the first thing that comes to mind is Job that we talk about quite frequently. He was already, before Satan attacked him and took everything he had, God said he was righteous in his eyes. But still, what happened to Job? He still lost his wealth. I'm talking about this cattle and service that was his wealth. He still lost his family in death. He still lost his health. And so if anybody should have prosperity of anything, it should have been Job. Amen. But still, some bad things happen to a good person. Amen, y'all. Tell the truth now. That's another exa bad example of, uh, uh, example I should say, of bad things happen to good people when they're living righteously is the apostles themselves. Yeah. Huh? If prosperity came materialistically and everything is going to be right, all right on the earth, why were the apostles with they literally walked with Jesus. And they still were whipped, right? Why were they in prison? Huh? Why was the perfect one in Jesus himself crucified? Hmm? You see, bad things can happen to good people even when we are righteous. That is why we need the strength and support of Jesus. He might need Jesus here today. Who will be with you always, even to the end of the world, to get us through these difficult times together and to overcome these obstacles. So as you can see, hard time comes to us all. But see, there's some hope there. See, when we look at John 16, verse 33, God, Jesus starts off with negative but ends with the positive. That's all right now. He says in John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. He didn't say in the world you have prosperity. He said, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Anybody believe that here today? Amen. As you can see, with tribulation, which are hard times we expect, Jesus still follows that up with peace in the middle of the storm. Oh, amen. Yeah. That's how you as a Christian, your, your bill may be due on thir uh, day 30, you can still on day 29 sleep without losing a week of it. Amen. Because why? You know God. It's going to provide for you. Amen. Amen. Because why? He'll never leave you, nor will you forsake you. Oh, yes. When you, that's a sign of whether or not you rule the Lord. Amen. Your worries are, uh, 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 what do you call it? Your worries are indicative of your level of faith. It really is. It really is. And the more faith you have, the more you will overcome the worries that's in your life. That's just truth, y'all. And see, we have peace in Christ despite things happening all around us that are negative because the Bible says we are in him. Did you catch those two words? In me, he said, right? Which means what? In him is where you have peace, right? As Galatians 3 verse 27, we know how we get into that, right? Those that have been baptized have been what? Baptized into Christ. That means what? You're in the me. So that's when what? The peace will come in your life no matter what's happening around you. It will overtake you unless you what? Not in him. Boy, am I talking to anybody here today? Amen. See, otherwise, folks, it's called the way it is. If we weren't as, as Christians here today and had been in, 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 in Jesus all the time, I'm going to tell you what was going to happen to us, right? You see, folks, if we were not in Christ and Christ wasn't looking out for us and giving us enough peace to get through the ordeals that we're going through, the sufferings and the hardships we always go through, we would have been in some serious self-destructive behaviors yeah. if he did not uh, preserve us during those hard times. Anybody been there? Yeah. If not, let me show you something. If Jesus did not level off our stress with the peace only Christians receive, we would be in somebody's alleyway or under a bridge homeless with a bottle of alcohol, right. trying to soothe our pain of our tribulations we're going through. Yeah. 
If Jesus did not level off our stress with peace only Christians receive, we would have given up all that we love and fight for. If Jesus did not level off our stress with peace only Christians receive, then we would have destroyed ourselves like so many people end their life with suicide. A long time ago. We wouldn't be sitting here if God didn't keep us stable enough to do the dreaded thing we wanted to do. Yeah. And I, oh, somebody been there now. Come on. Yeah. Somebody been there. It was only God that kept the. Now, how real y'all want to get? It was only God that kept that barrel from going off when you had that your head. See, I don't know Christian want to get real here today. It was only God that had, when you had like, those pills, you didn't consume every last one of them. But it was in your medicine cabinet by your bedside. You was going to do it. I'm talking to somebody. I know I am. Yeah. Here today. Everybody's been there. Yes, sir. Yes. But everybody that survived those thoughts and those things, you didn't do it on your own. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You on this planet, yes, whether we want to admit it or we don't. Yeah. It wasn't that you was a coward and didn't go through it. Right. It's because Jesus kept you. Yes, sir. And enough peace, even in the midst of the times you said it's done, I can't do it no more. Yeah. That's right. It was Jesus that did that for you. Because you was having the tribulation he said you was having. Yeah. There were people abandoning you. Yep. Yes, they were. There were people saying that you wouldn't be nobody. <laughs> you might have lost your job. Yes, huh? Some things might have been repossessed from you. Yeah. Huh? You felt all alone. You said, I can't do it no more. Yeah. But Jesus up in heaven, I already see what he's about to do. Amen. But I'm going to push a button. I don't know how Jesus did a job. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to push a button. He's just going to have five. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he does, especially nowadays. Yeah. People are not as strong as they used to be. And they ended their lives. Mm -hmm. Even as we speak. Mm -hmm. But it was because Jesus cared enough about you. Through your tribulation, that he gave you enough peace to get through it. Yeah. I know. You know what? Sometimes you go down the memory lane, you come back out of that thing, shout, well, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because yeah. you know what? Mm -hmm. It was God that was in you yeah. that was keeping you here. Amen, y'all. Amen. So, yes, the word is true. We cannot survive mentally, physically, or spiritually without Jesus' intervention right. in our lives. Yeah. If you have ever been in these situations where you've been brought low in life, but resurfaced victorious, you better give all the praise and glory and honor to God. Yeah. If Satan, because Satan was trying to destroy you. But Jesus was pulling you through. Yeah. Just so we go in pretty quickly here. Just so we are all aware. Let's keep in mind that God has given us the keys to victory in your situations. Yeah. To help us manage what we're going through when it's in hard times. First, as the wisdom of Psalms shows us in that key scripture being Psalm 37, 23 to 25, we must be good people for God to guide our steps. Amen. See, you can't, you can't, you know, blame God. I'm going to really take you somewhere. You can't blame God as things falling apart in your life and you can't handle it no more. And God ain't seen you in worship in a month. Amen. You, you can't say nothing about that. Huh? You can't blame God if you say, oh, God, you abandoned me because you just called God a liar. Mm -hmm. He said he never leave you. Yeah. No way you forsake you. Huh? Yeah. You can't go to argue with God. Some folk got the audacity to do that. Mm -hmm. Huh? And then expect that peace to be in your life. Amen. When you're doing stuff like that, you're pushing him away. See, the thing is, what you understand, the Lord is my strength and my refuge. Amen. Hmm? Who shall I fear? Yes, See, instead of running away from the power, run to the power. Amen. Huh? Amen. It's raining outside right now, right? Thunderstorm and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Why would you go get out there? I don't want to get wet, but you're standing out there anyway. <laughs> the building's right here. The door's open. Come to here where you can stay dry. If you got that much common sense. Man. Use it for that when you're struggling up here. Mm -hmm. You run to God, not away from God. Because if you run away from God, you're running to your problem. Mm -hmm. Any two directions you can go. Mm -hmm. Either to the problem or to the solution. Am I talking to anybody here yet? Yeah. Today, are you going to be able to share this with somebody else? Because if you do, you might save a life. Amen. Amen. So again, 
Step one, I repeat myself on purpose because I deviate a little bit. The word of Psalms gives us a key scripture. Again, Psalm 37, 23 to 25. If you want God activate his power in your life, you got to be a good person too. In order to let God, what? Guide your steps. You have to commit to righteousness as one of the keys to victory in the midst of your troubles. Next, number two. We commit to trusting the Lord through faith. Because he is a reward of those who have faith and seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Amen. In addition, we got to seek our wisdom from the Lord and not ourselves. James 1, verse 5. Your mind will fool you every time. Your emotions will have you doing some irrational things. So in other words, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I do that to myself sometimes. And I even tell myself, I don't trust you. <laughs> Y'all probably think I'm crazy. Go get him a shrink. Go get him a, a psychiatrist. <laughs> you know, go get him a counselor. No, sometimes I tell myself, I don't, I don't trust you. When it's, it's certain uh, decisions I have to make, yeah. and I already know I'm not thinking right. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on now. Yeah, don't give yourself so much credit. Yeah. There are times where I know, I'm like, look, Lord, I'm in a bad mood today. You woke up, as they say, on the wrong side of the bed. Yeah. Lord, you may have to help me keep my mouth closed today. Because I don't trust what I might say. Huh? I'm not really in the grace of moving certain things, Lord. Can you help me pick the path I need to go because I run into this one? Oh, yeah, I don't get it. And if you don't want me to do that, give me the patience to do it. Because, Lord, right now, I don't trust myself. I trust you. I want your wisdom. I want your strength. And I know this bad day going to be a better day because why? The steps of a good man yeah. what are ordered by the Lord. Amen now. So the next thing you got to do, that's number three. Number four. In order to overcome these things, these are keys to your victories and your struggles. You got to commit to not worrying. You got to commit there. You got to say to yourself, that's not my friend. I'm not going to keep talking to you. Right. Amen. Amen. And I'm talking about in your own head. You got to commit to not worrying in prayer. And that's going to take away your anxiety, miraculously, as a gift from God. Again, you know that from Philippians 4 6 verse 7. Furthermore, you got to commit to glorifying the power of God as having no limit. Right. No limit. If you put limitations on it, guess what? That put limitations on the solutions you will, you will accept from God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We know in Luke 1 verse 37 that nothing will be impossible for who? God. For God. And lastly, here's the hard part. The part I don't want to do, nobody wants to do. You got to wait until your change comes. Mm -hmm. Like Job did. Amen. Yes, she do. Who had twice as much than what was taken from him after the storm of chaos in his life subsided. And again, we know that from Job chapter 14, verse 14, chapter 42. If you do these things, church, you will be like a tree planted by the water. You shall not be moved. God bless you. Thanks for listening. The message is yours. Good child of God. And he walked this way today. It's time to get back with God, right? Yes, I won't take a long time in doing this today as far as the invitation and trying to restore you. Because you know it. Everybody that was here uh, earlier today is here tonight. Yep. So I'm going to keep it very simple. If you want to get back in the fold of God and peace of God again, you know what to do. Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, verse 10. you got to repent, confess your fault, and ask God to forgive you. Yeah. And he will do the just that. I believe pretty much at least 99.9% .9 of us in here have already made the gospel. So that means we got to share it. So remember how to share it. Remember that faith comes by hearing and hearing by what, church? The word of God. That's so Romans 10, verse 17. We know that the foundation of it all is faith in Jesus as the Son of God, which means our Lord and our Savior. Again, you'll see that at what? John 3, verse number 16 of the passage of Scripture. The third part of the plan of salvation is we have to repent as mankind, right? It is change our ways and live righteously under the auspices of Jesus' leadership. That is, we have to, what, live righteously, leave a sinful lifestyle alone. God calls that, what, repentance. Right. Luke 13, 3, verse 5. We also must confess Jesus as the Son of God with our mouth. That confession has an example of it in Acts 8, verse 37. When the Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is what? The Son of God. Also known as what? The Lord and Savior. That's all that means. Then we must go down. 
in the watery grave of baptism. A pool behind us is ready to receive anybody. And the Bible says in Acts 22, verse number 16, why tarry us out? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Calling on who? The name of the Lord. That means what? Look to Jesus as your Savior. Because when you go into that water, that's when you become a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's when God will what? Wash away your sins. Which is another word for what? Forgive you of your sins. And God shows you your status changes after you come out of the water grave of baptism. That's when forgiveness happens. And that's when the label of saved is added to you. And that's also, we look at Revelation 20, verse 11, 15. That's when your name is written in the book of life on the judgment day. So we know all this is in Mark 16, verse 16, Galatians 3, 27, Mark 16, verse 16. And in other passages of Scripture show us that we have to be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins and the salvation of our souls. Once we do that, then again, we got to stay on the road to salvation, don't we? That's what Jesus meant when he talked to the whole church. When he said in Revelation chapter 3, uh, when he said in Revelation 2, verse 10, excuse me. Where he said, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown. Of life. Remember, faithful means literally loyal to Jesus. He believed and obeyed him to the end. Heaven's going to be your home. So if by chance I misjudge the crowd, there is somebody out here uh, that needs to make Jesus their Lord and Savior. We'll take your confession tonight. And we'll baptize you tonight. Won't you come forward as together we stand and we sing the Lord's invitation. Won't you come as together and we stand and sing. Oh, do not let the word depart.